Merry Christmas and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Paul. I'm Dean Melinda Hall and we're glad you've joined us for this service of worship tonight. Everything that you need for worship is contained in the leaflet that I hope you receive at the door. A reminder that in this service at the end, we will gather at this table to receive bread and wine and we also offer folks a blessing. Whoever you are, you are invited to come and receive what is offered, either bread and wine or a blessing. As we gather in this space before worship begins, I invite you to take a quiet moment and let the joy of this season, and the joy of Christ, fill your hearts and minds. Worship will begin in a moment.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is now named Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will stab it establish and uphold it with justice and with peace and with righteousness from this onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, brightening salvation to all training, us to renounce impedity and world passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. According to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord The night is indigo, lit by brilliant golden stars. And from a tiny shed, a baby makes his first cries. A baby born to parents who are holding him, just like a baby down at Hammett, whose new parents hold and cuddle him. A, a, a mother who is so overwhelmed by her love for this child that the story says she simply pondered these things in her heart, just like parents of newborns who suddenly love this child in a way that actually defies language. A baby greeted by random shepherds and sheep and goats, these unexpected strangers who come and find their hearts lifted by this baby, just like any baby can lift the hearts of even the most curmudgeonly person in a long grocery store line. Babies bring joy, and this text is simply full of that joy. But of course, the difference is that this baby happens to be God, which magnifies the joy even more. This is the extraordinary, cloaked in the ordinary, laid in a manger. This is God who's come for us, come so that nothing will separate humanity from God ever again, not life, not death, not sin, not hell, nothing can separate us from God. This baby has come to ensure that we are enfolded in grace forever. And this is God delighting in loving people. And it's Mary knowing that this baby will set the world to rights. 
And it's the shepherds exulting that somehow they were included in this miraculous event. This is the vulnerability of God. God making God's self available to people by becoming one of us. And the baby will grow up and we will watch him call fishermen as his best friends and eat with all the wrong kinds of people and feed crowds and go for boat rides. And that will be God doing that. God so close to us we can touch him. We see him laugh and we see him cry and we see him eat. God opened to us, Emmanuel, with us forever. What joy. The night is indigo and dotting the sky are brilliant golden stars. And from a tiny shed, a baby makes his first cries. A baby born into poverty, like so many people in our city, around our country. A baby born in a time of, of census, taxes and counting for conscription, just like a baby born in St. Petersburg. A, a baby born under the threat of, of illness and violence, just like a baby born in Gaza City, a baby born in the middle of a mess, coming into a world, the delight of a baby, the joy, and yet the inexplicable sorrow of what this child will face in a world that seems such a disaster most of the time. And of course, it's not just any baby, it's God which somehow magnifies the paradox, that this is the extraordinary cloaked in the ordinary, laid in a manger, God who's come for us. This is God, the vulnerability of God, opening God's self to us, opening God's self to rejection, to the loss of his friend, to empire and to violence. And contained in the birth of Christ is also the other event that reveals the deep vulnerability of God when the flesh of God hangs on a cross and is crucified. And tonight is a celebration only because of that crucifixion. It's the odd paradox of joy and sorrow that sit side by side in our lives. And in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the infinite made finite, the joy and the sorrow all set together as well. Who is Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully human, who walked this earth, who understands the strangeness of the joy, the, the decorating of the Christmas tree and the baking of the cookies while half a world away, people are dealing with dying loved ones and incalculable loss. Jesus Christ knows that. And so, in the birth there is joy, but there are the seeds of sorrow. And this is why I think Christmas is for all of us. That whether this season for you is one that is, uh, just contains an enormous amount of joy and levity and your family is here and your children are excited, or whether this season contains pieces of sorrow, memories or loss, Christmas is for you. The Word made flesh, Emmanuel, came to dwell among us, to experience all of the joy and all of the sorrow, sometimes all at the same time. The night was indigo, and the sky was lit by brilliant golden stars, and from a tiny shed, a baby makes his first cries. Hope for the world is born. A promise is given that one day God will bring everlasting peace. God will make everything and everyone whole and well. God in every season of our lives, in the joy and in the sorrow. May you know that truth in your own life, this night and always.
Come, let us adore Christ the Lord. Let us pray, glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Make joyful our hearts. Strengthen your church with humility and faith that we may triumph over the power of evil. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You abhor neither the simple nor the lowly. Shine your light on all the world the nation, that the nations may look upon your truth and find their salvation. We pray for all places that are at war or in conflict. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. May all of creation burst forth in songs of praise. May all the works of your hand glorify you. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Summon the people of the city to yourself. May all of the distractions and heartache of our life fade away in the joy of your presence. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You love us so dearly. Grant your healing grace to those who suffer, to the poor, to those in need of love. Open your arms to the sick and, to, and the lonely. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. All glory be given to you. You blessed our earthly bodies with your birth and you promised to raise us to new life by your death and resurrection. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we praise your name for the incarnation among us and for your continued presence with us. Hear now our prayers and petitions as may be best for us and for your kingdom. The peace of Christ be always with you. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary pondered all these words and treasured them in her heart.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. The fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
gifts of God for the people of God. As we prepare to share this meal of bread and wine in which we believe grace is present to us, a reminder that this table belongs to Jesus. Whoever is welcome to receive what is offered, either bread or wine or blessing.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Jesus Christ.
The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. rejoicing in the birth of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. 